Oh, yeah. You see it right away. Right from the boat, you don't see it at all, and then suddenly it's so clear. Oh, man, I cannot believe I'm actually standing on this. This is where our history are buried. And as long as this thing is here, it will remind us that we've been robbed. We were robbed. Immediately after World War II, the US was engaged in a Cold War arms race with the Soviet Union. Between 1946 and 1958, the US carried out a series of nuclear tests, detonating 67 giant bombs in the Marshall Islands, a tiny nation of 29 atolls that was a US military outpost in the Pacific. The tests, a US officer said at the time, were for the good of mankind and to end all wars. Everything is in readiness now, and at last the moment has arrived. Bomb away. The shockwave visibly roared across the ocean and hit the camera ship miles away. Rising with the cloud are millions of cubic feet of radioactive ash. In the late 70s, the US sent servicemen to clean up, burying vast amounts of radioactive soil and debris under a massive concrete dome. But just four decades later, plutonium and other hazardous materials may already be leaking out. In total, more than 3 million cubic feet of radioactive waste was buried under this 18-inch thick concrete cap but the cleanup was only partial. Vast areas of contaminated land were never cleared at all, and now the dome itself is starting to fall apart. See, look, that was repaired, that whole section. Big crack here has been repaired. I mean, look, that's literally someone's just gone with the yeah. tube. It's a glue. No cement would last forever. I mean, if plutonium has a half-life of 24,000 years, this definitely isn't going to last. It's only been 50 years. That's the other grader. See how deep that is? Yeah. Next to the dome is a crater from one of the blasts. 44 of the 67 tests were conducted here on the Inuitok Atoll. The two on Luna Island, the Little Cross Crater from 1956, and the Cactus Crater from 1958. It was recently discovered that it wasn't just local contaminated soil that was buried here. 130 tons of waste from the famous Nevada nuclear test was also shipped all the way to the Marshall Islands and buried. Lots more waste was simply dumped into the lagoon. The largest of the nuclear tests was the Bravo explosion on the Bikini Atoll in 1954. Approximately 1,200 times the size of the bomb dropped on Hiroshima, the blast was so big that another atoll called Rongelap, almost 100 miles to the east, was covered in radioactive dust. Merje Joseph was seven years old when the Bravo bomb was detonated. She's one of the last remaining survivors who can still describe what they saw. So the first you knew that anything was going on was, was, was literally when you heard an explosion? So you couldn't take any of your possessions? Do you still have any hope that you'll be able to go home again? I don't Nerje has never been able to go home. But elsewhere, some Marshallese were told by the US government that it was safe to return to their atoll. What the US didn't say is that toxic waste had been dumped into the nearby lagoon, which is one of their main sources of food. Cosimo Johannes, the current acting mayor, returned in 1980 when he was 17. 
In 1986, when it had long been clear that the nuclear legacy was much more harmful than the US had promised, and with the Marshall Islands itching for independence, the two countries signed a compact, and the US agreed to pay compensation to victims of the tests. Because it wasn't safe to eat locally produced food, the US also agreed to send shipments of processed food every three months. Here we go. We have rice, sugar, canned meat. You guys want to eat spaghetti? Spaghetti and meatballs. And this is this is one shipment every three months from yeah. the US. And if we run out, we go swim out there and get some fish. Yeah. Even though they're poison them, they are not good for our health. Yeah, yeah. But we have to take it. Three generations have now been suffering from the impact of the nuclear testing. Amongst those who lived through the tests, cancer and miscarriages became commonplace. Mina Titus was living on Rongelap Atoll when the tests were conducted. <laughs> How old were you when you first started to get sick? Did any of your children or grandchildren get sick? The US knew exactly how much damage had been done and the danger that contamination posed, but didn't share that information with the Marshallese when the compact was negotiated. U.S. government documents declassified in the early 90s reveal just how much information was withheld. Ariana Tibon, Education and Public Awareness Director of the National Nuclear Commission, is organizing these declassified documents to inform the Marshallese public of what really happened. Here it shows Project 4.1, which is the biomedical studies that were done on human beings. Within these documents, one U.S. official makes the case for using the Marshallese people as research subjects by saying, while it is true that these people do not live like Westerners do, civilized people, it is nevertheless also true that these people are more like us than the mice. The Marshallese people believe and they know that they were exposed on purpose so that Project 4.1 could carry its course. Ariana also showed us one of the most commonly reported effects of the tests, birth defects. Some babies were born um, without limbs there was a, an instant where there was a baby with no arms or legs and no head. The skin was transparent and they could see all the organs beneath the skin. This baby was born with white hair and no ears and no genitals. All of this makes me feel like we're not even human to the, in the eyes of the United States government. The compact also set up an independent tribunal to assess and pay out health-related claims from a $150 million fund for nuclear victims. The fund was set up as a trust and was supposed to make $18 million a year, but there were so many claims that it quickly ran out. Kathy Wakefield has been helping victims make their claims since 1994. So this is the condition? Yeah, the first, yeah, the first list. More than a dozen different cancers, unexplained bone marrow failure, radiation sickness, severe mental retardation. And these are all conditions you've seen regularly in these in these claims. Yeah, yeah. Okay, pending claims. I'm here. And they were fully compensated? 
But not yet. But when were these claims made? From the beginning. They come to my office and say, when are we going to get paid? Where is the money? But there's nothing I could do. You know, I tell them, go and talk to your uh, senators. The Nuclear Claims Tribunal concluded that $2.2 billion should be paid to the Marshall Islands. But to date, only $4 million of that money has been sent. So that's the US Embassy. They originally agreed to an interview, um, but then they said, only if we don't ask about the nuclear legacy, which is a bit like being granted an interview with Harvey Weinstein, if you're only allowed to ask about his charity work. The Marshallese will get a chance to ask for these failures in funding and in the cleanup effort when they renegotiate the compact, which is up for renewal in 2023. Former president and current foreign minister, Kasten Nemra, will be leading the negotiating team. When the Marshall Islands and the US signed the compact, the U.S. said that all past, present, and future claims are now taken care of. Yes. What's your reaction to that? Our negotiators, they didn't have a lot of information at that time. As a member of, of parliament here, how much do you actually know about, about the long-term legacy of the nuclear testing? I mean... So we don't know much, with the exception of what's been provided. And the U.S. has the information about what was done and where, but they just haven't shared it all with you so far. Well, they do. And you can imagine these were kept as a top secret information, and they have their own protocol how these are disclosed. We're just at the tip of the iceberg. We don't know that much. The Marshallese commemorate their experience each year on March the 1st, the anniversary of the Bravo test. And as a new generation takes up this defining issue, they're also demanding action on a newer one, which threatens to make the nuclear legacy even worse. The coffin that embodies the horrendous truth of our nuclear legacy, Renet Dome, is at risk of collapsing due to the rising seas. The Marshall Islands are already facing a serious threat from climate change and the subsequent rise in sea levels. The entire country is barely six feet above sea level and sea walls are already being built to save people's homes. Back on Runa Island, we returned at high tide to see how vulnerable the dome is. Whoa, that whole side is covered. Yeah, I mean, earlier on, this felt like it was almost yeah. beach. But now it's almost completely submerged. However long it was designed to last, it wasn't designed to be submerged, I'm sure. It, it wasn't at all. I don't think when it was designed, sea level rising was part of the equation. This is kind of like a crazy thing. It's actually nice and beautiful up here. How can a dangerous place so beautiful at the same time? 